What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. Now, you have to keep in mind the reason why I don't think Ionis and the Era civilization was destroyed during Younger Dryas is because they have the lineage of an older time period in the same technological sophistication as all the other lost civilizations around the world. But we don't see any of those iterations of those lost civilizations after the Younger Dryas. Meaning that after 13,000 years ago, these cultures, the majority of them were destroyed and the majority of the knowledge was lost and they were never able to build what they could ever again. And we know that because of sites like Machu Picchu. At Machu Picchu, next to the Torreon, is a wall there, okay? And in that wall gives shows three different levels of construction. Not two, but three Showing you, imagine you had a, you had a proto-civilization that built it all in perfection. Imagine they get wiped out. Then there's like survivors of it. Just some, right? Yeah, yeah. And they maybe grew up, grew up with some of the indigenous and they try to rebuild. Because at Machu Picchu, we see the second level that's, second level of building on top of it that's not as, not as advanced and as big, but it's still pretty good. But then on top of that is like really primitive work. Brick and mortar and really, really simple work from the Inca. So it's like, imagine, this is, this is how I think it played out on Earth, I was to a guess, based on everything I've studied. Imagine a civilization emerges, the Sumerians, they get destroyed in a great catastrophe, like more than 50,000 years ago. So we can put a time frame on all this. And I say more. Then imagine the stories are that this era civilization literally comes out of the survivors of that. And, but something new is lowered and they literally get all this knowledge and all these ancient techniques and then they go around the world and they create all these civilizations, right? Now imagine the younger Dryas from 13,000 years ago is what then destroyed them. So it's like you have these iterations, oh. right? You have the first one that's gone, it gets destroyed. Then another one comes and it gets even more advanced because something was handed down. But then when that one gets destroyed, all of those things are not re-lowered again. Like, um, it wasn't supposed to be. It's like, okay, well, you guys find your way now. We're not doing that again. You know, it's like almost like kids finding a bunch of toys in someone's tool in like their garage and they have no idea how to use them or what they're for. It feels, it, it looks more like uh, there was an interest in our story and helping it and giving us all these advancements. And then there was like, now we're just going to be hands off and let you guys do, do your thing on your own. See if you can figure it out. That's what it seems more like, and that's where we are right now, is here we are thousands of years later. We're becoming technologically advanced. We got more time on our hands. We're starting to like wonder about ancient stuff again, right? Things are starting to push the narrative towards that, and here we are. We're, we're finally looking back and be like, wait, what if that's true? What if they really did exist? And I think that's where we're at right now is we're at that pivotal point where we are going to have a collective shift in our consciousness, where there's going to be so much evidence that comes from different avenues that eventually the old narrative will crumble. And I think it's going to come along with the same time period of probably rewriting um, education systems well, and a lot of things. Why are you calling it a shift in our consciousness? Well, because I feel like the way that we've been portrayed and taught is almost like being kept in a prison. If you're taught that the brain creates consciousness, then you live, in, you live in an existence where the life you have right now is a fearful one because you die and that's it. And you're like, you, so you feel thankful for what you have and you feel like, oh God, I'm glad I can eat, right? I'm glad I can blah, blah. But that whole mindset is based on this survival of the fittest mm -hmm. mindset that tr treats us like another animal on earth, just like anything else, right? Except that we're not strong we're not super agile. We can pretty much be outrun by most animals on earth, but we're really smart. And I think that, and we have this divine spiritual nature to us. I think that we need to separate ourselves from the animal kingdom. We need to stop thinking about ourselves as just an animal. We need to think of ourselves, as, we need to start redefining what, it's, what it is to be human. We need to start looking at all of the echoes of what the ancient civilizations were trying to tell us but of that's, who we doesn't are. doesn't that go against biologics, though, because we are an animal? Well, we're an animal, but again, it comes back to how do you measure consciousness? What is consciousness? Is consciousness what defines us and we're just in this body to experience something physical? I'm telling you, when you redefine something like that, 
you change the entire human experience. It's almost like if you had a, a, an animal in a zoo, okay, let's say you, like an animal has never been anywhere else his whole life. It's like, it's just in a cage and it's with other, other lions in a zoo. And it's like, oh, this is my existence, right? I'm like walking around in here and there's people looking at me taking pictures, but then you take that animal and as stressful as it is, and you bring it to Africa, right? That lion and you let it out. And all of a sudden it's like, whoa, where am I? This isn't what I, what am I supposed to do? There's no food being brought to me. I'm not eating out of a bowl anymore. Yep. What I'm trying to say is I think that we've been conditioned into a controlling type of mindset on, on what we are and who we are to keep us complacent and keep us focused entirely on giving away the creative potential and the divinity of who we truly are to someone else. Okay, let me ask this question. And I think you make a lot of fair points about some of the, let's say, organization of society that happens no matter what, right. even when there's better logic sometimes. Yeah. I. I don't disagree. Let's play devil's advocate, okay. though. Do you think some of your thoughts on this could be biased by your experience? Because, like, some of the thoughts I have on it, I could admit are probably biased on mine. I'll say yes, but not in the way you think I'm going to say yes. Okay. I'll say yes because I have lived and breathed what the ancient teachings that they've been trying to tell us are and experienced firsthand what they said and what we are. That's not what I mean. Let me go back. I wasn't okay. clear enough. I'm saying before you did any of this, yes. before you even got curious yes. about this stuff, you there was an impetus, right? And the impetus was you were pissed off and you were pissed off at what? You were pissed off at how things were taught or how things were organized because you believed it to be wrong, which you might be right about okay. a lot of that, yeah. by the way. Yeah. I'm not saying I disagree. That's fair, yeah. But then do you think it's possible that you could have some form of, in your research itself, confirmation bias to want to find something that could replace this in a better higher spirit consciousness way that's going to improve the whole systems that you think totally made you upset as um, a kid let me give you a good answer on that i didn't plan on doing any of this i wasn't like that that kid that at 12 years old years old is like i'm gonna be an ancient history writer and i'm gonna like this is people need to know about this i didn't i mean i was interested in it but I wasn't anything like that was dr driving me to do anything. I was just going along with life like everybody else was. And I think this is important because I came to this from someone who didn't have any expectations or was looking for anything. Mm. So imagine if you were like looking into something and like you already have a predetermined expectation of what you're looking for. So you're kind of worried, right? Like it's the problem. Ooh, I'm kind of worried that yeah. that if I look into this too much, it's gonna um, it's gonna provide pieces of information that like make me not believe what I did before or something, right? Right. Well, something we're all guilty of at some point or another. This like era civilization, anything I've done in this, it's been more like the complete opposite where like you go into it and you're like, this is kind of interesting, right? Wow. Wow. Like, how do they do that? I don't know, but this is kind of wild. And you start, you start reading, you look at it, you start, you start delving into it without any predetermined expectations. Cause I didn't, I just was curious right? Just curious and interested. And as you look more and more into it and you, you read what they left behind and you embody it, you almost, you take in, you take in the teachings and what they were saying and you almost take it into your life and you, um, you try to live what it'd be like with their mindset or at least entertain the idea of it. And it's, what I can say is the point I'm trying to say is that I wasn't looking for any expectations or I had no predetermined things of what I was going to find or anything. It was more like the more I looked, the more I couldn't believe what I was finding. The more that it became so powerful that it changed like my entire career, everything I thought, everything I was doing. That might be true, but also, and again, it doesn't discredit what you're finding either. That's not what I'm getting at yeah. here. I'm still, I'm trying to get at the core of like making sure we don't go too far or any situation like that, because I think that happens across anything in society where we have one side and another right, side, right. right? There's mainstream versus not mainstream. Perfectly fair. But you may not know, oh, I was going to find this box relief right here. Oh, I was going to find this exact temple of the sun right here. I didn't know but, any of that. It fell right, into my lap by accident. Right, it fell into your lap. But you, it might be fair to say, and this doesn't discredit you, yeah. but it might be fair to say you already are pissed off at all the 
base teachings that happen because you believe so much of history yeah. is covered up that you want to find the things that are covered up. So sometimes, I'm, and it might not be this one, yeah. you may find the things that you think are covered up that maybe aren't because you want to believe that it's covered totally up. Totally true. I mean, it's that's there's always confirmational bias like built into someone. I Which I do as well. I, I, I understand Let's that. Let's not throw and, stones and that's in a, glass houses. That's a, fair, that's a fair point to make. And I think that that's something to consider. But I'll just say that I wasn't looking for the civilization. I wasn't. And even when I started to find pieces of it, I wasn't hoping for anything. I wasn't like, oh my God, I hope this turns into something bigger than it is. It was more like, boy, that's really weird. What is that? That has similarities around the world. I want to know more. And then the next one has like even bigger stuff. And then you're like, and then I saw I honest and I was like, holy, you know, I could not. Right. It was for me... It, that's why I said it was a George Smith moment. Like I wasn't expecting it at all, and I think that's what you're trying to get at. Is yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't like hoping that something would bend around what I was looking for to become something. Like oh, I hope this civilization exists to finally prove everything. It literally just fell into my lap, and the more it unfolded, the bigger and bigger and bigger it got until I realized the implications of what it really was. From someone who's an obsessed, I can look at any megalithic wall in the world. I. I do. I I do believe I will you hang sit my down hat and off. jerk off to megalithic walls. I I can look at any <laughs> megalithic wall in the world and tell you where it is. I bet so you I can. hope someone can challenge me on that. Yeah. Um. So when I saw these, it got my attention very quickly because I had never seen those walls before, and that's what led to these discoveries. But your point is fair to make. I had no expectations or anything going into this or even knew what to expect. It fell into my lap and then changed my life forever. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.